Oh my god, look! It's a YouTuber! So I just returned from my vacation and I was roaming around in the jungle where, believe it or not, you don't see too many mechanical or hard surface objects. Most everything is organic, so I thought let's make this video about organic stuff and that's also why I drew all these things here because I want to concentrate on like ellipses and I want to concentrate mostly also on um, cylinders that bend and move animal necks, uh, hose sort of things, branches and stuff like that. So let's get started. Okay, so one of the main things, so it's several things, there's no names for this. One that I like to do talk about is like a guiding line. Uh, this is our guiding line. If we want to make this a hose, you have to imagine that you have little ellipses on this. And for little ellipses, we need the major and the minor axis. So let's just a quick reminder. When we're drawing an ellipse, you have a minor axis and a major axis. And you try to fit your ellipse. Well, there we go. Not fantastic, but you, do, you try to fit your ellipse onto these two axes. So when we look at this, how you're trying to find this is always, this is the point where I want to put my ellipse, which means here I have my minor axis and here I have my major axis. As we know, these two are perpendicular. So this is going to be my ellipse here. And then it is up to you to decide how wide or how narrow uh, this minor axis is. So if I would quickly fill this in, And then switch back to black uh, and then just make sure that you connect all these lines or all these edges on the outermost outskirt. And there we go. You just, you can strengthen these lines to give it oh, a little bit of roundness. And like here we have another ellipse that I forgot to draw in. Would be somewhere there. We just don't follow that bend there. Okay, a fair question now would be how thick or thin do we draw the minor axis for these ellipses? So let's explain that. So one of the main things that if you remember from ellipses, we had the horizon line here. And then if I fill this now, if I will make this a tube and fill it with ellipses, as we move away from the horizon line, our ellipses open more and more uh, in both directions. So as we move, let me fix this. As we move up or down, our ellipses are going to become more and more open. And basically, we have sort of like a tube. And this also holds when you look something from the side. So let me, let me say it like this. So if we have a pivoting sort of line here and we are standing here. So this is usually in, in, in front of us, right? And then we have this would be a cylinder from the side. If we start rotating, uh, let me add the red color. So if we start rotating this cylinder, so imagine if we look at it from up, this is our head, those are our shoulders, this is this line, and this is our cylinder, and we start rotating it this way. What happens, just, just like here, is that it starts opening up until we face it directly and then we see a circle. So until that, you, you sort of have these uh, ellipses, but as soon as you're facing it, it's, it's a circle. So this is an exercise, well, te technically, of course, it wouldn't bend. It would look something like this, right? So th this would be if, if you would want to draw it a bit more correctly. But this is something you have to keep in mind because that's how you can control this. So uh, let's say, we have sort of a snake head and this is just from the side. So from the side, I'm just going to double this line like this and I'm going to give it like a square head. Uh, this is looking just at the side. So we're going to give it an outcrop, like a circle like outcrop here and we're going to give it something there. Uh, just so you, just so we have an understanding what this is, let me draw it out separately. 
So this is going to be the head of our whatever that is. So this is strictly from the side, so very flat. Now, if I want to move this around a little bit, what I can do, I say this, and let's say it, it's, it's gonna face us a little bit. So what I could do here is this is the ground, uh, but think, keep in mind, let's, let's put the horizon line somewhere there, because this is HL. So we sort of look down. If we look down, we see one of these, so it's not flat. So we see one here. And then what we can do is I'm just gonna add a couple of these so I see how I can control it. And let me just make a copy of this quickly. Okay, so as we open this up slowly, there we go. Now we have a little bit more of a, well, let me be a bit more brave with these lines. So come around here and now we see that these are relatively open, something like this. So I'm just going to place my box there, uh, which should look something like this, if we follow it correctly. Okay, so now we have this boxy snake head in perspective. And now I copied this, uh, English, I copied this because we can move this around. So let me take this away now. What if we want to turn this snake towards us? So as I talked before, if it turns towards us, we have to open up these ellipses, not have them be that narrow. So we'll come back here. And what I'm gonna do is keep this arrow and then slowly I'm gonna start and opening up these ellipses and then here I can put my block like this. There we go. Actually erase what's in it so it doesn't bother us too much. And this would be like the nose part of whatever I drew there. And then here we would have this ear thing. So let me just outline this head a little bit so you guys can see the proper perspective that we're working in. Something like this. And now I do the same connecting here and here. And now if I strengthen these ellipses, you can see as it slowly turns towards us. So it turns away from wherever it was looking and it turns towards us. And this goes the other way as well. So you just make them rounder and rounder, you connect, and then you can, it can look obviously the other way, like this. And now that's where its nose goes. And this is where the ear things go. So keep in mind, whenever you want to draw necks or organic necks, the, the turning points where are, there we go. So I can move this to the side there. So the important things are this, so horizon line, goes up and down, becomes from thin to thick, thin to thick. And also if we are looking at something, uh, as it rotates away, it becomes thinner. And as, as if we face it, it becomes thicker. And obviously I'm mostly talking about cylinders here. Uh, one more thing that I think is important with this little lesson, is uh, uh, branches as well. So if we have a tree and the tree is here and then we have a branch here, how do you draw these things? So something interesting that happens, and this is again, this goes very well together with this one. We sort of have like a horizon line here, which obviously we don't, but we have a focus point. So if we are looking at the branch and this is the center of the branch, then what we're going to have is our ellipses are going to go thinner towards this focus point and then they're gonna start opening up again. And this is important because usually 
branches have like a connection there which is uh, rounded so you have this rounded connection and then from this rounded connection it makes sense to have uh, let me erase this it makes sense to have these sort of elliptical rounded patterns but as we come to a center they become almost straight and then they start opening up again but now the other direction and then when our uh, branch uh, splits from here on it's always going to follow this direction because if we are here that is going away so we have this uh, basically almost like the opposite effect of this but we have this so we're looking at this sideways like this so the further away you go the more open it becomes so here is this fake horizon line I call it focus but all the names that I'm using don't search for them I just came up with them on the spot I don't think you will find them anyways the main idea is that here it's round here it's round and then as it comes closer to this uh, focus point I'm gonna call it it becomes thinner uh, let me move this a little bit over here and obviously this is gonna work if 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 you have if we have a screen here uh, and you have a, a spaceship something landing here and then you have sort of like a pipe or something running here since we're since we're watching from here uh, there's a pretty good chance that it's going to go from almost flat here at the angle towards more and more and more rounded in that direction just in general when we have a pipe and we're looking at it straight so this is where our person is looking at it is going to be the same effect as if we would be uh, doing the horizon line but then upside down upside down my uh, no it's sideways okay two things that i forgot to mention and that are important so one is here with these ellipses of course when we have this guiding line and when we want to draw our ellipses on it i drew these as per uh, perpendicular because they are as we know in an ellipse the major and minor axes are always perpendicular on each other but think of it as wherever we decide these points for our uh, ellipses to be the minor axis has to be parallel so in this case here parallel in this case here parallel in that one point where it's touching it where it's touching our uh, guiding line so if we have a circle and if you say here is a touching point and whatever I draw one I want it to be well tangent is the better word right so that that would be a nicer word so if I say this has to be tangent here or here it has to be tangent so think of it that the minor axis here is always tangent with that dot in the line and then here you can draw the major and the major and the major and so on and so forth and the rest you already know so this is something that i forgot to mention in the beginning to keep in mind we have a tangent and then we have a perpendicular on that one so the other thing that might be a little bit confusing is this sideways uh, thing here that i drew let me draw that in there so if you are standing here in the center uh, and you look this and that way your uh, view will be more rounded towards that end and towards that end and if you're looking towards the center let's not push our mic as you're looking towards the center that turns more into a line so this is this is what you see let me actually turn to red so that means if we have again a branch here if you look at it technically it should be all straight and as you go to the right it becomes more and more rounded same thing here it becomes more and more rounded so this is what you would see with a branch now this thing is sort of the opposite because your head stays in its location and you have I'm gonna look a little bit like a tilted view you have a cylinder here that is slowly being spun this way 
So here, let me draw the axis so we have a better understanding. So this will be something like this. This will be something like this. This will be something like this. And this will be all the way there if this is our point of rotation. So this is sort of the opposite. When you look at it, it's round, and as it twists away, it becomes thinner and thinner. And also, think of it, think of it. Think of it from your point of view, this here, let's go, let's go blue. No, it's not blue, this is blue. Uh, this here is going to be um, the thinnest, just because if we have the eyes here, right? Uh, you're going to do like a rotation of the head, probably, if you look that way. So if you have the cylinder here and you have the cylinder there, because you're looking this way, if this aligns up with uh, the minor axis, this is the one that is going to be appearing like this. This here is already going to look like it already rotated a bit away from you. I hope this is not too confusing, but just, just keep in mind. Uh, let me look, let me see the camera. <laughs> so where's the camera? Here's the camera. So this is, this is now parallel with the camera. That's why you see it. If it rotates a bit further away, you already see this angle, but from the other side. If it rotates towards the camera, you see this angle. So, so keep that in mind that you only have uh, a flat when it faces your camera exactly. So if your camera are your eyes and you move your head a little bit, that ellipse is going to change its shape. And with this colorful, super sketchy page, <laughs> I guess we can call it an end for this video. I hope you liked it. And more importantly, I hope you learned something from it. If you have questions, comments, anything, uh, leave them uh, as a comment down below because I read them and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. There's always helpful links in the description down below with Patreon links where you can support me if you want to. I upload extra PSD files there. You can see how I layer everything. I upload extra videos there, process videos, sometimes also tutorial videos. So take a look. Maybe you find something that uh, you might like. Uh, but the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.